going to tell you a story with a big fat trigger warning. Big one, big one. If you're close to me, if you um, in any way, family, friends, um, anyone, I recommend watching this at a time when you have a moment to process it because it might be difficult. So you have 10 seconds to exit this before I get on with my story. Five. Four, three, two, one. Here goes. Welcome guys and thank you for listening. This is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my entire life, but if I don't do it now and if I don't speak up now, there is a chance that this could happen to someone else and that they lose their voice. And I don't want anyone to ever lose their voice because we are all such beautiful individuals that we all have something to contribute to this world. So, saying that, if your family, if you're, you know, you've got shit on today, don't probably, don't, don't watch this right now and take a moment when you've got a moment to digest it. Fuck. <laughs> um, and I really want to say that why I'm, why I guess I'm bringing this up is so no one feels alone in a culture that is toxic. We live in a culture that is rape culture and you cannot deny me that. Why is it so that so many women have been raped but no men are talking about the fact that they were raped or that they raped? either side why is this conversation not open and the why that sits inside of that for me that feels true to me is we have a justice system that is so difficult on rape on something that's so hard to prove that there's no like medium between a really long prison sentence and you know two years community service and although saying two years community service is enough for a rapist is probably not but the system that we have in place it's like oh that's too serious we can't prove that well enough so you actually don't need to go do that we're just gonna keep on moving on you know so I would like to ask you to come forward and question this system that we have in place and hopefully together we can find some answers to make the world a little tiny bit better place. So thank you for listening and I'm about to tell you my story. Hi. So it is a time in the world for change. Um, I think everyone can feel that and I'm, I'm telling you guys nothing that you don't already know. Um, but today I, I've decided to tell you a story and this is quite a difficult story for me to tell and I please ask that you have the grace um, to listen there is a trigger warning in here um, and I the reason why I am telling this story is so that I can live my most authentic self so that I can be myself 110% um, and this is something that's caused me a lot of pain and difficulty in so many situations because I have been so fucking silent and I need to speak up. <laughs> it's time. Um, I, I get told that I'm a role model for little girls, but if I can't tell this, I can't be a role model. So, I'm saying this so you don't, don't have to feel so alone. 
Um, I've been so lucky to live an elevated life from where I grew up. Um, okay. So I guess <laughs> we'll start with once upon a time. Once upon a time, um, when I was 15, um, I was just moved up to Adelaide for high school. Um, I was going to a special science and math school. Um, and mum moved up to Adelaide from Kangaroo Island with me and my brother um, so that we could get a better education. And within that first year of high school, um, my dad got, uh, my dad, My dad got what we thought was a middle ear infection and he got flown up from Kangaroo Island to Adelaide to Flinders Medical Center right next to where I was going to high school at the time and then got diagnosed with a brain tumor and after that I think it was only a few weeks after that he died. It was originally five five years to live and that was hard and then six months and then it was quick. It was really quick. And it was hard. It was hard because you don't just lose yourself in that. You lose, you lose structure, you know, when you're, you're made, <laughs> Support is gone. It's it's quite hard and being in a new place. Um, so it's not until I've come back here that I've been able to digest that and really be like, oh, okay, that that's part of my story. Um, that's part of me. Um, and own that, that, oh, actually, I'm half him. Um, so... That was hard. High school was hard. I think it's hard for everyone though. Like, you know, we all go through it. Kids are weird and mean and whatnot. Um, and I, I, I don't know what happened those years. Fast forward, I'm at uni. I'm at university and I'm studying a Bachelor of Science. Um, and someone who I'd known for a very long time he was my swimming lesson instructor, um, always messaging me and I was like, whatever, that's like a weird vibe going on over there. And then he's like, okay, I'm, I'm leaving. Can we catch up before I go? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. So I invited him to my friend's very small house party. Um, it was an overtly silly night. People who know me know that I've got this like extreme silly that can't be switched off sometimes so me and my friend had like I was like um Voldemort uh wrapped up um behind um and he he was the other half um and I was like this creepy little head and it was it was a really really fun night um and then okay we're gonna go home I like so I don't, I don't really want to go out um and so he drove me there. I drove to his and then he drove me there. Um, and then we walked back to the car and hopped in the car. And he, he said, I've been wanting to do this all night. And I was like, mm, no, this isn't my energy. Like, I am Voldemort. Um, as you do when you are Voldemort, you know. Um, and then a few streets over, away from the party, he pulled over. And he raped me. This was a, a long period of time um, that this occurred and multiple different types of sexual assault. I think it was 16 different types of sexual assault. 
And to go through that, it feels, it feels like you lose your body, you know? Like every part of you that is woman, that is whole, gets taken away from you. It is the worst kind of abuse. It is the worst kind of violence. And I do not wish this upon anyone else ever. But it happened. Yeah, that's fucking horrible, but it happened and it happened to me. And um, I'm, I had a really hard time with the police at that time. Um, I couldn't admit this to myself for years. I was so traumatized. I just kept running. Um, and the first time that I went to the police, um, I spoke to a woman. She took it all down. She took it all down, all the details. I had to go into detail about every little thing. She said, because this occurred in a different area, it's a different police station department to deal with. And so I went to the other police station. It's not easy to talk about. There's a reason why people don't talk about it is because it's fucking hard, okay? So in that, I re first thing I did was I knew that I'm gonna need my girls around me. So I asked for a female police officer. We don't have any available. And that was hard and he was hard and that was too much pain to to tell this story to somebody who does not really support you in it um i know it's got to be both sides and all of that but it was it was probably one of the most traumatizing things um and that's where I truly became silent. And so I left. I left for Melbourne. I was like, fuck this. This is too much. My friend Emily, she's going to Melbourne and I've got to, I've got to deal with this. Um, actually, no, one, one more thing before that. Um, I guess it's probably making me say this now, is that all I wanted was a little bit of support. Just a little bit of support. But when you can't support yourself through it, no one can really help you. Um, but I told, I told my mother. And I just wanted a hug. But it triggered her. Same thing happened to her and she never spoke up about it. And then, so I was in this weird situation where I had been Right. And I needed support, but then I had to be the support instead of get the support, which is no fault of anyone's. Like it's a fucking hard situation for everyone around. But what I needed at that moment was to support myself. So I left. Um, I left and, oh goodness, what a journey. Um, it, it's a really belittling thing to do. Um, but I think unless we can move through pain and actually see that there's another side of pain and, you know, realize that that pain is part of me and if I can't love that, I can't love myself. So I must love all of me every little bit. Um, so yeah that happened and then when i was in melbourne i was working as a door gal and i loved that job i met so many amazing people um so so many amazing people um one of which was the delightful alex gleason goodness you don't even know you're getting this shout out so um but he gave me the platform of a voice that I didn't have before um, and strength in that. Um, and we threw something called Chatterbox. 
So Chatterbox was this moment where I realized, fuck, everyone has been through this shit. There's so many women who have been through what I've been through or worse or not as bad or, you know, have been through it and aren't able to talk about it. So we threw a party to talk about bro culture and, and rape culture. Um, and that was amazing. That was, I can't believe the, the amazing artists that came through for that. Um, not that many people turned up, funnily enough. Um, this is well before me too. Um, yeah. So <laughs> this is a, it's, it's bizarre, but I just want to say thank you, Alex. Um, thank you so much. There's also, <sighs> there's also a link that I'll leave below. So I'm not telling you this to be your support because I can't, I can't take on that, but there is a space that you can tell your story that now exists. So please do so. Um, thank you. I just wanted to add, her name is Soma Sara and she is amazing, like true strength. Um, and she has created something called Everybody everyone's invited um, and it's a platform in which you can tell your story um, and I really do recommend that you check that out because you can be anonymous in it because I know that this is not an easy thing to talk about so love and light how on earth does one get ready I just have this overwhelming sensation that my life is about to change forever. I don't know if it's good or bad because I've known no one that's done this before. Um, but that's life. No one, there's no makeup tutorial on the internet of how to get ready for this. <laughs> Love you. I hope you're doing well this morning.